Hi everyone, this is Johnny O'Nose, and in this Let's Game episode, I'm going to cover the game Starbound 1.0. Now, Starbound was just released 1.0 on the 23rd of July 2016, and it's been in beta for two or three years now, and I've got to say that this game has grown exponentially since it was released. I mean, this game has changed so much that it was actually hard for me to jump into it um, after I played it when it was first released for about four or five months. Now, uh, one of my stream viewers, uh, he had mentioned that I'm going to use his byline to describe the game in a nutshell, and it's basically Terraria meets No, uh, no Man's Sky, and he couldn't have been more spot on. Uh, the art style in the game looks very much like Terraria. It's got it's got a 2D feel to it, and um, it's got all these different all these different workstations that you know very reminis reminiscent of of a Terraria. Now the No Man's Sky portion of it is the ability to fly to different solar systems as well as many different planets. The coolest thing about this is that each of these planets are procedurally generated in a way that uh, it has its own has its own main biome, but inside of it is could be many different biomes. So basically, if you see a frigid ocean planet, one frigid ocean is not going to be anywhere near the same as another. So you still have more inclination to go and explore these different planets. So that jumps right into the first strength that I want to identify for the game is the freedom to explore and to make and make your own mark on the galaxy. You can go to all these different planets and and find all these different like cities, places to explore, you know, mini biomes that are really interesting like the steampunk mini biome. You've got like a a forest that the trees are made out of eyeballs. It looks all looks really amazing. Couple that with the ability of, of being able to build your own colony really adds some longevity to the game that makes it feel like you're actually taking part in, you know, in the, the game and in the galaxy that you inhabit. So I'm going to just go ahead and zoom down off of my ship here and go into my colony. As you can see, all these people are here because, you know, I gave them a home. So I built out their little rooms, I gave them all the items that they like, and depending on what items I throw into these different uh, different rooms, they you get a different type of tenant that appears. Like you see up here, this person is a flesh person, and right down here is her room. So I used all of the items that I had found in a flesh biome to build, you know, the chair, a door, a table, a, ch uh, a chest as well as the background material. And because I use all those uh, materials, I was able to get a flesh person as my tenant. So you really have a lot to explore, and at the same time, you feel like you can make a mark of your own on the galaxy. Now, it goes into our next our next strength, which is basically you have so many different items to, to identify as well as build yourself. Like, you, you've got bone doors, hive tables, I mean, there's just so much. And the different items you can find are just amazing. Like this weapon that I have right now is called an evil eye, and uh, it shoots eyeballs. I've got this other crazy weapon called, um, what do they call it? It's this gnome gun. And it's basically a gnome that you hold in your hands when, when you use them, he barfs out rainbows. So along with these unique legendary weapons, you can find your conventional swords, axes, as well as firearms like um, assault rifles, grenade launchers, rocket launchers, anything you can think of. Uh, so there's just tons to build, tons to collect. There's also archaeology where you can expose, uh, you know, the bones of like a dinosaur or some like gigantic beast, um, as well as like all these peripheral uh, items that you can use for decorating your place. The next, the, the, the next strength that I would like to identify is uh, it's it's really easy to jump into multiplayer. Most games like this, you've got to set up an Amachi server or an Amachi virtual network and then jump over LAN or go and get your own dedicated server. Now, that's not to say that you can't build your own dedicated server st for Starbound, but if you didn't want to go through all that hoopla, you can easily just join someone else's single play player game just by going into Steam and, well, you can't see Steam, but you can go into Steam and then you just right-click the person that's playing Starbound and then say, join game. And it'll take your character and it'll move you into that person's multiplayer game. So, really lots of great stuff in this game. Lots of lots of cool items to use to, to decorate your places uh, and lots of places to explore. It, it just makes for a really fun exploration and building game. Now, the first weakness that I'd like to identify is the... Uh, there's a pretty steep learning curve in the be beginning of the game, and it's not because the game is complicated, it's because it's a little bit on the convoluted side. 
Um, as you can see, that there's these all these different crafting stations that you you start the game out with. Now, in most games, you get like a workbench that can give you most of the items that you're looking to build. In this, it's split between all these different crafting stations. Like you have your own like little furniture workshop, uh, industrial workbench. Then you have um, agricultural related items and you have medical items and you have sewing items. It just seems like they're split off just a little too much. And the game doesn't do a really good job of kind of pointing you in the right direction in the beginning of the game, which is why especially the, one of the first Let's, Let's Learn episodes I'm going to build is like, is basically going to be about this first 30 minutes of the game, just so that you can get alchemated and understand what's going on. So it's really difficult to figure out like what you need to build and why like the, the biggest thing i ran into in the beginning of the game was i kept starving from lack of food and it's because i didn't know that there were multiple tabs even within these multiple workbenches so there's like tier after tier of just different lists of items that you have to discover yourself so it took me a while to go into the agricultural table so foraging farming and hunting items and then i noticed that there was a second tab here the game didn't do a really good job of pointing me at these tabs. Now, um, I mean, obviously over time I learned how everything worked, but it took me a very long time to figure out that I needed to make a hunting bow here or a hunting spear to go ahead and be able to collect additional food from the monsters that are inhabiting the planet. So uh, the UX is a little bit weak. It doesn't really tell you what's going on. Uh, you kind of have to figure a lot of things on on your own. The second piece, uh, uh, the second weakness that I want to identify is your inventory in general. Now, it's really nice that you have a separate inventory for every type of item, but it is extremely difficult to figure out whether or not an item exists in one tab or the other. Like I've been working on the rail system where there's there's buttons, there's rails, there's there's platforms that you have to be able to build, and each one of those items goes into a different category here, and it's very hard to find. Not to mention that there are just so many different items to collect and so many blocks to collect that you end up running into a situation where your inventory, even though it's split on all these different ways, you still you still run out of inventory space extremely quickly, and you're having to do a lot of inventory management to keep yourself sane. Like I'm very OCD about my games. This is the very first game that I've just, you know, I've given up trying to organize my stuff and I just fill up my inventory and the stuff that I need, I keep the stuff that I don't need. I just end up, you know, either trashing it or throwing it into a storage container somewhere. Hopefully I'll be able to find it later. So the inventory is, is very difficult to use and there's not a lot of tools to be able to help you with that inventory management. Like there's a, there's a lot of games out there like Space Engineers that allows you to, uh, Space Engineers and Empyrean Galactic Survival that allows you to access multiple workstations but from one location. And it would be really great to have that ability added too. Um, the last the last weakness I want to be able to uh, identify here is that there's a lot of systems in this game that feel either shallow or undeveloped. The first one I'll bring up is the are, are the this really cool Pokemon thing that they've added to the game where you can go ahead and capture pets. Now, the only way for you to be able to alter how a pet behaves is through I can't really mouse down, but you can see at the bottom of the description there is a like a collar. Um, that's it. Like you can you can give them extra health, you can give them extra damage, you can do something cool like when they die that they they release poison. But that's it. You can't level the pets up. They they don't have, they don't don't level up. They don't get stronger. Um, this leads into this situation where they tend to die quite a bit. Now I I do, I do realize that your pet strength is um, is proportional to the tier of armor that you have on. But even then, even with the highest tier uh, armor, I go to the highest tier planets and my pets maybe last two or three hits at most. Even on mid-range planets, that they're really easily killed because of the fact that um, they just get hit based off of the character moving around and they've got uh, contact damage. And the pets really don't last that long and it's really lackluster and I, I really wish there'd be something added to make these more interesting and sure that the system itself is is very fun be able to collect all the animals each of the animals has different abilities but at the same time it's just really hard to keep them alive that it just kind of you kind of feel like it's not worth it 
Uh, the other undeveloped um, undeveloped system that I like to pull up is the the crew members. Like these crew members are really neat. Um, the whole the whole process of getting them though is extremely difficult and it's very random. Like basically, you can do you can get crew members in two different ways. You can either run into people on the pl on the different planets and do quests for them, or you can colonize an area and have people come to you and then take quests from them and then you'll be able to do the quest and then they'll eventually become your crew members. But for, but for them to accept you as as a captain, it's random. So you could do like ten quests and get no crew members, or you can do one quest and get a crew member. Uh, it's very difficult to build up your crew, and this is the primary way that you expand your ship. So I only have four crew members, which allows me to have like the tier two or tier three ship. Um, but and I, I've been working really hard at this. Like, <laughs> I mean, I could easily just spend some money to expand my ship, but I really like to do it through, you know, inviting crew members to your ship and building it that way rather than using the money route. But, um, yeah, the, 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 uh, crew members, uh, they, they get on your ship. They, they do get, uh, provide you some bonuses, but that's about it. Like it just like, once again, still feels pretty shallow. The third system that I feel is un underdeveloped is the colony, the colony stuff that I was showing you guys earlier. Now this could be because I'm kind of like a Dwarf Fortress kind of fanatic. I love games like Dwarf Fortress, RimWorld, uh, you know, uh, Unreal RPG. Like I like seeing community building in a game like this, but I do want a little bit something more to it. Like there's no resources that you have to gather. You don't have to feed these people. Really the bare minimum to bring in a colonist is this. You have, you have a door, you have a light, you have a sealed room, as well as a colony deed, and that it just kind of exists here. They don't do anything else once they're here. You can take some quests from them. They randomly give you gifts every so often, which is nice. But um, other than that, there really is no colony building other than someone comes around and gives you some money every so often. So and once again, this is just my opinion because I love colony building in games. So... Uh, yeah, this is I'm definitely biased in this retrospect. But overall, Starbound is a fantastic game if you're into building, if you're into uh, I personally love mining. I don't know what it is. I can just mine forever. Uh you can build like you, you can dig out like huge swaths of land. Now let me just see here. I'm probably going to die here by falling. They have really cool really cool skills and and abilities as well as items, but you can dig through the land and, and you can find ore, you can find uh, different biomes under the ground. It's just an awesome experience overall, being able to go to different planets. I mean, that's the hugest thing is like, you know, a game like Terraria, sure it has its three tiers of difficulty where the game kind of reboots itself every time, but you can reboot the game the way you want it to. If you want to go to a, a snow planet, you want to build there, you want to go to a, a volcano planet, you've got all this freedom to do what you wish and to build what you wish um, without there being that many uh, limiting factors. So, the, all right, that's Starbound 1.0. Uh, and this is Johnny Onos. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And I'll be making some Let's Learn videos on this game very soon. So if you're interested in jumping in, stay tuned. I'm going to do Let's Learns, and I was gonna do, I'm going to also do a Let's Play. And I've been streaming this game for the last week. So you can take a look at uh, my experience learning the game and jumping into the game at your, at your leisure. So... All right, folks, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode.